Okay, so we were asked to give some, some comments from the industry side on this topic and uh, I'm from, from uh, Fortum, my name is Eero Vesaoja, I'm responsible for nuclear R&D at Fortum, so this is more, more from the nuclear side than from the district heating side, but uh, let's see. So, uh, Fortum, uh, I'm not sure if there's actually one person here who doesn't know what Fortum is. Uh, and we're in quite a bit hurry, but I'll just say shortly that we are a utility that operates in the Nordics, Baltics, uh, Poland and Russia. Uh, we believe in, in uh, uh, CO2 free production uh, for a cleaner world. Uh, as, of, as of now, most of our fleet in, in EU is already CO2 free, and 96%, and we have a lot of hydro and nuclear production. Uh, I'm going to shortly tell what Fortum has been doing when it comes to SMRs uh, at first. Then I'm going to tell uh, some of the difficulties that maybe the vendors didn't mention. What, what could be challenges when it comes to this, something to solve. And then uh, I'm all, all going to uh, go to the positive side. What are the opportunities? I think Raul's report already mentioned the opportunities. Maybe 4 million tons of CO2 emissions reduced in Finland was one of the opportunities. And then I'm going to answer the question that I will be asked if I don't answer it. So what's Fortum going to do? <laughs> it's going to be quite, uh, quite uh, not as interesting as some might think. <coughs> so uh, let's start with what we've done so far. Uh, uh, we started uh, uh, already in the early 2010s, I think. Uh, in 2013, uh, one uh, doctoral dissertation was finished on, on licensing of SMRs. And I think this is the third time you see this licensing, licensing uh, image. This was done in the, in the PhD, uh, and this is somewhat similar than we've seen already twice here. Uh, one comment that I've received is that uh, changing the process to have this uh, design certification, even though sometimes it looks like that the grass is greener on the other side of the, of the fence, maybe there are also difficulties that we should learn from those who have done it already a long time in UK or USA, for example. Then we focused on some of the safety features of SMRs. We did uh, a simulation and safety feature study for the new scale SMR. Uh, we've done a master's thesis on, on safety classification. So uh, what are the classifications of different, different um, uh, functions, for example. And now uh, our most recent published work has been the uh, district, heating, district heating potential uh, in, in SMRs. So we've also, also followed this, uh, this trend quite well, I would say. Some internal work that we haven't published much about uh, has been uh, development of our own tools, for example, simulation tool for safety analysis. We've done that for helical steam generators. I think at least two of the designs that were presented today have this technology utilized. Uh, we've also uh, done a report on all of the designs that we've found from different vendors and, and looked at their, their stage of, of, of readiness. And uh, currently, we are wor working on a business opportunity study with an external consultant on what are the possibilities in, in, in uh, district heating and SMR. So I think we're, we're progressing well in this topic. Uh, we also have some collaborations. I think uh, Ville Tulki already mentioned those, so we are participating in those indeed. Okay, now to the difficult part. Uh, what are the challenges uh, from our point of view in in district heating with uh, uh, SMRs. Well, the first one was mentioned that there's a big change in, in the industry. We are currently uh, in the middle of huge reduction in prices when it comes to wind, solar, batteries, heat pumps, and so on. So these will be things that affect all investment decisions. If, if, if everything is moving very fast, it's difficult to make decisions that uh, have the span of maybe 60 years. And uh, while it is true that there are not that many burning free uh, or combustion free opportunities for district heat, there are actually still some uh, that are utilized. Uh, utilized. Deep geothermal was mentioned once, uh, not re ready technologically yet, but, but a very promising option. And uh, data centers are uh, a big part of the future and, and they will also produce a lot of heat that can be recycled in, in district heating. Then if, if we go to the individual designs of SMRs, uh, we, we've learned that we should not start any projects with half-completed designs. Uh, I think that's, that's been uh, very well learned here in Finland. Uh, or maybe it hasn't been, who knows. Uh, but there's also the 
problem that is mentioned by some of the some of the vendors that they don't want to pl plan a design that is completely ready and costs uh, hundreds of millions of dollars that nobody then buys. So so we have this <coughs> difficult situation. Uh, also, one more of these chicken and an egg problem: uh, finished design or, or or not finished design. And uh, there are a lot of designs uh, right now in different stages. We have uh, some very, very mature and some very initial. Uh, I think we've seen examples of uh, mature and initial designs here also today. Uh, and it's not clear which ones of those will actually make it. I, I think maybe a handful will make it, but there are maybe 50 or 100 designs currently uh, planned. So it will be difficult to know beforehand which ones are the ones that will benefit from the, from the scale of economy or, or the uh, large fleets. And uh, we are quite aware that uh, many cost estimations that vendors have given uh, on their new designs have been very optimistic, so to say. So uh, we are quite uh, skeptical about many of the first, first uh, approximations that the vendors have on the price of their designs. Uh, we have some sensitivity analysis done on, on the designs and uh, many of the most important things are, are uh, the cost of capital, for example, and, and uh, also, also the price of price of heat, of course. Uh, so, then the next next uh, problem is uh, how many designs will be will be there, and and how many of those will be deployed. So maybe we have the handful of designs that are deployed, but will there be two deployed, ten deployed, or twenty deployed? That is probably going to change the learning curve quite quite dramatically. And then uh, the. Last, uh, last challenge that I'm going to have here is, is many of the designs have been done for the global markets where electricity is still the main focus and, and remains probably the main focus for quite a long time, as it's very important. Uh, so they're designed for electricity, which makes them inherently quite uh, complicated, but a simpler solution could also be uh, utilized. But at least they have some CHP options, so that's, that's good. Now to the positive side, uh, I think we are, we are working to the right direction. Uh, this, uh, these are a couple of quotes from our CEO. They did not, uh, uh, he didn't talk about uh, SMRs in specific, but, but climate change and actions required for that. So I, I think the translation is mine, but he said something like this, that massive actions that, uh, about climate change, massive actions that affect every sector. It requires large investments in emission-free electricity and heat production as well as trans transformation to CO2 free energy practically in all areas of, of the society. And other one in the same, same direction, meaning that uh, Finnish, uh, Finnish uh, expertise will be valuable in decarbonizing the rest of the world. And, and uh, I think this is an audience that will be very easy to convince why nuclear, so I'm not going to go into the details, but we have a very good track record in some countries. Uh, unfortunately, a track record some years ago, but still a good track record. And Finland is a very good place when it comes to the Western, Western world and, and nuclear. We have two, two projects going on and that's quite rare. So, uh, more opportunities. Uh, I think this is also mentioned in, in Raul's report that uh, this would save a lot of biomass and uh, as, as we, most of us know, forest, uh, forest uh, industry, pulp and paper industry and, and wood industry are a very big part of the Finnish economy. So if we can uh, improve the, uh, the value of, of the products, meaning using the, uh, the forests for a more valuable product, that's going to be good. Uh, and that leaves less, less um, wood for combustion. Uh, the same goes for, for waste. I think waste, uh, we are getting better and better at recycling. So there is less waste available for district heating. And uh, we also noticed that uh, the efficiency uh, in, uh, reduces the uh, amount of waste heats available, so buildings are built more and more efficiently. There are less and less waste heat streams, so uh, there's a limited amount of waste heat available for, for heat pumps. So many of the other options are not uh, maybe solutions by themselves. And even though I said earlier that the uh, LCOE for CHP doesn't look good, 
So it's not very prom promising at this point, at least from our study, what would be the price of electricity. It is still possible, for example, that the achieved prices for CHP would be much better. So there's always risk when you look just at the LCOEs. Uh, they work very well with, with very stable prices, but if the prices aren't that stable, they don't mean that much. And when it comes to net present value or, or, or any of these economic investment indicators, you have to also understand the effect of, of uh, the interest rate. So if you, if you discount the benefits from far future, you are not going to see uh, long-term investments like nuclear as very uh, important, but we should be actually solving the long-term problems. So, so let's not use too steep decline in, in the value of future profits we get and future benefits we get. So what are we going to do? Uh, as of now, we are kind of, kind of in an exciting, exciting point, uh, but still uh, we, have, we have no current investment plans and we have no commitment, commitments to any vendors. So uh, our work is in R&D, which, which is my responsibility, so I'm very excited about that, but uh, I'm not the manager of very huge investments, so <laughs> as you understand, uh, that's not the kind of decisions I would be making. <clears throat> Uh, they are a very important part of our R&D, especially the district heating nowadays, and we are working on a suite of business opportunities that we can offer for the people who make uh, decisions on, on where to head to. And uh, whatever the decisions will be, I think Fortum has a very good set of uh, skills to work on this area. Uh, so we have uh, uh, the ability to provide services to any of the, any of the players in, in, in district heating and nuclear in, in general. So that was the accelerated version of my presentation. I know there's coffee waiting, so I want it to be fast. Thank you. All right, at this point, we'll break for some coffee.